Hello, it's Jeannie and my friend Bertha. And today's video is going to be one of a little TLC, some nurturing, some nice sounds, doing an old-fashioned beauty parlor curler set on Bertha here. Bertha, as some of you may remember, has been a very active and somewhat willing participant in some of my videos. And she could use with a bit of pampering. So that's what she's going to get with this old fashioned curling curler set. When I was a little girl, my mom, not a lot, but occasionally used to go to the beauty parlor. A lot of her friends did. I have a squeaky chair. They, would, they had standing appointments once a week for their hair to be curled, washed, curled, you know, and then set into this beehive. My mom did it a few times, I mean, you know, once in a while, but for the most part, she didn't go every week and get her hair into that big beehive. But when she did, and I went with her, it was really neat. I mean, all these women sitting around in the hair dryers, you know, the big bonnet hair dryers over them. <clears throat> and reading magazines, or talking, gossiping, smoking. Everybody smoked. My mom didn't smoke, though. And it was just a really neat atmosphere. And these women knew each other because they saw each other every single week at the same time getting their hair done. So Bertha could use a bit of pampering, as we all could once in a while. You can see the strain and stress on her face. It's okay, Bertha. For those of you who haven't met Bertha, you need to go back and watch my uh, beauty shop video. I'll put a link. I don't know which side it goes to. And you can meet Bertha. So, let's go ahead. and start with pampering Bertha and think about how you would want to be pampered. What do you like? What do you feel is pampering and TLC and self-care? Is it a massage? Is it a facial? Is it getting your hair done? A manicure or a pedicure? Is it staying in bed and reading a book? So tell me in the comments what you consider 
your best pampering and TLC for yourself. I've got my Earl Grey tea here. I will try not to slurp. Bertha has been a good sport. She's always pretty willing. Or not. Hair like this could have been piled so high back in the 60s. And while I do her hair, I'll tell you a couple of stories. Some thoughts that have just popped up that I'll share with you. I used to cut the girls when they were younger. I used to cut their bangs and trim their hair. And I've done a few like little pixie cuts here and there. As with any mom who trims their kids' bangs, sometimes it was a hatchet job and it was, you know, bad. And sometimes it did okay, but all the little girls back then had butchered bangs. For the most part, though, I didn't cut hair. One time I cut my brother's hair, my older brother, Brian, and it literally looked like I put a bowl on his head. I was probably 14 or 15, and he let me, I don't know why, but uh, it was a bad haircut. I remember another time my mom was trimming my younger brother's hair, Ben, and he was getting real squirrely and moving around, and she accidentally clipped off the top of his ear, a little piece of skin from the top of his ear, that soft little thing, and blood just started spouting spewing everywhere and Ben started howling and my mom was kind of screaming she didn't mean to and and his hair was only half cut so that was a real chaotic day at our household okay and then one time when I was in Going into first grade, there was a little girl down the street. Her name, oh God, I shouldn't say her name, but I'm going to say it. Her name was Mary Alice. Mary Alice. And I won't say her last name, but I do remember it. Anyway, she was a year younger than me. And 
I convinced Mary Alice that I was a hairdresser. Barely going into the first grade. And she believed me. And so my mom wasn't home. My mom was actually down the street at her house with her mom having a cup of coffee. So I convinced Mary Alice that I was a hairdresser and that, I, that she should let me cut her hair because school was starting in a few days. So I went and got a chair and a grocery bag in a long time and I sat her down in the driveway and put the grocery bag next to her and I basically cut off her hair I remember thinking I was being so stylish I would take certain chunks and cut really close to the scalp and then I left other pieces long. It was very avant-garde. Well, I j and I want to make a note here. It was not done with any malice. It was done in full belief that I could do it. And um, so I got done with her hair. Put all the hair in the bag and I was really proud of what I had created. So we went down to her house where my mom and her mom were sitting there having coffee and we walked in. Now Mary Alice had super thin, thin, fine, fine hair. And it probably took her her whole life to grow it to what it had been. All I remember is her mom screaming, screaming, and my mom laughing. I was really confused. So, I don't remember anything after that. So, I asked my mom oh, a few years back what, what happened with that, because I lost my memory of it. I don't know why. And she said, that all she could do was tell her that she would pay for haircuts as her hair grew out. I mean, that's all she could do. Okay, I'm gonna turn Bertha around. And um, I think I was not allowed to play, or I should say she was not allowed to play with me after that for a while. But honestly, I, um, I didn't mean to cause harm. I really didn't. <laughs> Oops, that's not going to stay. Let me try this one. But her mom was mad for a long time. I get it. I remember one time when my girls were little, one of them cut the braid off of another one and she had really long hair and she just cut her braid off. <laughs> so, kids and scissors, huh?
So I don't think I played much with Mary Alice after that. Even after the ban on me was over. We, you know, she was a whole year younger. So, Mary Alice, Mary Alice, I don't know whatever happened to you, but if you happen to see a video like this, I'm sorry, I chopped your hair off. I didn't mean to harm you. But it's a good memory <laughs> for me. I don't know about her. If you're a hairdresser, you'll probably think she's setting the hair all wrong. Probably am. Yeah. But so have you ever cut somebody's hair and they regretted it? <laughs> I think most moms have. Yeah, we've attacked our kids' heads. Most, not all. Another story about haircuts. One time my husband, he used to, because he's a pilot, he used to fly to Japan a lot because he liked the haircuts they did. Um, there's a name for it, like Ushiburi or Washa Washa Ushiburi. Um, I can't remember. I would have looked it up had I thought I was going to tell you this story. Anyway. He used to go and get his haircut in Japan because they did the whole steam and, you know, just really, really pampered for a man's haircut. They really pampered him. Well, he hadn't been to Japan in a while, but he did have a Germany trip coming up. So I said, well, just go down and, you know, get a haircut in Germany when you're there. So he found a barber not far from his hotel. It was either in Munich or Frankfurt. Anyway, he went in and the guy didn't speak English, which was never a problem in Japan. And so Zane, my husband, told him by showing him how much he wanted taken off. Well, lost in translation, the guy thought he meant he only wanted that much left. And he buzzed my husband. Now, he doesn't have a lot of thick hair anymore. It's thinning. And, whoops. So he buzzed him. He sent me a picture. It probably hadn't been that short since kindergarten when boys, little boys in the 50s, early 60s, used to get buzz cuts, you know. So, but he didn't need a haircut for a long time after that. So, as for me, I've had a few. My, I'm really lucky that my hair grew.
grows fast. So if I get a bad haircut, it grows out fast enough that I'm not too worried about it. And I shouldn't say bad haircut, just maybe something I'm not super fond of. So, but I had have, I have had some bad colors when I was younger. Now I, I kind of just do some highlights and lowlights and because I'm mostly white hair and a little dark blonde underneath here, but um, because I'm mostly white, it washes out after about mm, eight, 12 weeks, something like that. But I remember one time, I thought I'd go auburn, like reddish brown. And it was interesting. I've never done anything wild like purple or blue or pink. No, I haven't done that. I think Auburn was my biggest, my biggest. Um, going out on a limb with hair color. But for me, my hair is lighter, and so when it grows out, it doesn't grow out with dark roots, it grows out with, like, um, light roots, or, you know, dirty blonde that used to be, you know, I don't know why they call it dirty blonde, dishwater blonde. That's what they called it. I'd also like to read, because I think these stories are funny after the fact. Tell me about maybe a bad haircut of yours, either done to you or someone you know. Also, you know, growing up, for the most part, we did our own home perms. My mom, if I, I remember a few times getting a perm and my mom did it. Number one, I remember the smell. Oh God. I mean, I think I still have brain damage from that smell. And number two, they were very good. They were stringy and um, It wasn't a nice, even, tight curl. It was just kind of a, it would be a strand of hair with some bends in it. So, so another story was one time, and I think I've told this one before. I, I, I did, I know I did. But for those who haven't heard it, I'll tell you. Oops, I don't have any more skinny ones. Oh, here's one. I was highlighting my hair with some, like, I think it was called frost and tip. I was in high school at the time. And we used to do sun in and go sit in the sun to, you know, get that nice, you know, beach blonde. And we would also do these highlights with this frost and, uh, frost and glow or frost and tip. And here, let me move this. Sorry. And so I used to highlight, I had long hair, and I would highlight this part of my hair just right in front. And I knew how long to do it. It was like 20 minutes. 
Well, one day I was home alone and I had my hair with the bleach on it because that's what it was, just straight bleach powder and the mix and you mix it up into a paste and you paint it on. And the doorbell rang and it was some Jehovah's Witnesses women. <clears throat> and they used to come by, oh, every few weeks and bring us some uh, magazines. I think it was called The Watchtower. And they were so nice. And we always talked with them. And, you know, we were always nice to people who came to our door selling something. It didn't matter if we agreed with them or not, you know. Um, but they were nice women, and so I answered the door, and there they were. And they asked if my parents were home, because my mom and dad always engaged with them. And I said, no. And they said, well, you know, there's an article here you might be interested in. And they open up the pamphlet or whatever, and they start showing it to me. And I've learned to be very polite. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, my hair needs to get rinsed out now. But I can't be rude. So finally they left. And I think I was there for like 40 minutes, twice the, the time that I should have been for the processing. And I went and I washed my hair and I had two white, white streaks. And I didn't know what to do. So that's how I wore my hair. Two white streaks, like a witch. <laughs> I remember at school, a few people, a few girls told me it looked really cool. So that made me feel not as bad. Because I used to wear my hair up either in a ponytail or like this, you know, clipped back like that, and uh, or kind of up on the top of my head, so it was easy to see. Those are the biggest disasters that I can think of. But I do think that self-care and pampering and TLC, you know, are things we deserve to indulge ourselves in once in a while. You know, and I know things like massages and, you know, uh, facials and stuff like that can be pricey. They can be expensive, I know. And so it's not something we can all do every week. You know, it sounds good, but... And so, you know, if you're married or if you have a partner, you know, perhaps talk about ways that you can serve the other and they can serve you. And even if it's just 15 minutes of, for instance, face stroking, that is so calming. And I don't know if you can hear this. When my dad used to put us to bed, he used to rub our faces like this. And it would be that whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. In the two years that I've been doing this, I've never done a thing where I've touched my mic. So I have no idea what that's going to sound like. Be super loud. It could be, I don't hear anything. This will be interesting. If it's really bad, I'll just be deleting it, editing it out. And so, if you have someone who cares about you 
and you care about them, you know, think about ways you can give extra time to some special nurturing. Maybe it is a massage. Maybe, you know, it's, it's scratching. Back scratching. Maybe it's just talking and making some soft sounds. But finding the triggers for yourself and for them. This world is so full of harsh things. That little softness and nurturing are, are needed. This is an all plastic brush. A foot massage is something that's really feels so good, so calming. In Japan, they have these head spas. And it's all about, I mean, they do hair washing and massages and all these different things. It's very ASMR-ish. And there's a gal who goes around and gets the these head massages and also films them. Her name is AS, the channel name is ASMR Twix, T W I X. And these, the women, they speak softly in Japanese, whispery. Oh, it's so nice. I love that. I wish we had them here. And if you're in the Houston, greater Houston area, I'm north of Houston, up on the lake, Lake Conroe. Um, if you know of something that does that, you know, head massage, you know, head spa, that's the name of it. And I'm not talking about just the extra massage you get when you go to the hair, you know, hairstylist to get your hair done. When my gal washes my hair, and it's got conditioner in it. She gives, you know, the extra. That's fine, but that's not. That's not one-tenth of what these people do in Japan. Google it or YouTube search it. Japanese head spa. Oh, so wonderful. I'm in my kitchen, my little kitchen area right now. It's a gray, gloomy day, drizzling. But I just felt like being somewhere else and doing this. I didn't want to be upstairs. So I'm busting out of my little studio more and starting to show up around the house. My husband's out of town, so I don't have to worry about him banging in, in the garage or coming in and out of the house. And He's wonderful, but, you know, when you're trying to record, you hear everything, everything. It's crazy. <clears throat> well... I wish I could fast forward 
and take out all these curlers. I know, I'm gonna go blow dry it and come back and let's see. So I'm gonna pause this, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Let's see how that comes out. Wavy. Not very curly, but it's going to look better than when we first started. It's going to have lots of nice wavy body. But it really needed to sit for a couple hours, I think. Or have one of those big bonnet dryers. I'm too impatient. There was something about the beauty parlor that I that I really loved. I think it was the ASMR-ish thing of watching people get worked on, you know? And pampered. Oh, yeah. Do you have memories like that? I might not charge her for my services here. Okay. I actually like this. It's full of body. Had I allowed it to sit a little longer or dry it a little longer, it would it would have been pretty. I'm surprised I haven't been bombarded by the cats. Usually they want to be in on something like this. Okay, Bertha, this one is going to be on the house. You don't have to pay. Okay. 
my girls used to like when I did their hair, and like I would uh, French braid it. I can't do that with Bertha because she'll fall over. So I need to find some way to. I've got a little tripod I could stick this on, but. Um, Clearly, not today. That's it. I just wanted to do something pampering, quiet, gentle. Nurturing. And basically, nothing you have to think about. Just relax. Just relax. And pretend this is you getting a nice hair playing session or head massage here. And I hope you're just zoning out. Okay. I'm going to sign off. Here's wishing you peace, calmness, nurturing, quiet, tuning out, and just overwhelming relaxation. Let me hear from you from those things that I asked. I'd love to read some funny stories. Hopefully they're not too crazy. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.